Hey everybody, welcome back. Sorry it's been a while since I published a video, but I have a few things going on that uh, kind of got in the way. So today I've got a piece of really old and crusty ficus natita, or Indian laurel. And uh, it's got a big bark inclusion in the middle because it's a crotch piece. And I'm hoping to save that and uh, really showcase the features there. So let's get going. One thing you'll see in all my videos is I usually show one or two cuts at normal speed just to kind of give you an idea of how fast the piece is spinning and also how long it takes to actually do these things. But the sped up parts are all at 10 times speed and that just kind of makes things go a little faster. I got this piece from a neighbor's bulk trash pile a couple of years ago and uh, it's pretty beat up and there's a lot of cracks and stuff. I do some filling with CA but I think in the end it probably would have stayed together without that but they did kind of smooth out some of those areas a little bit which you'll see later. As you can see, the grain on this wood is pretty pronounced. There's alternating light and dark bands of the growth rings, and it makes the finished piece look really nice. Uh, a lot of chatoyants, and you'll see that at the end. Right here I'm trying to decide whether to keep that bark inclusion in the foot of the bowl or whether to turn it a little bit smaller and have a nice clean foot. And I decided in the end I would just go ahead and take it out of there because it was only a really small chunk and it only reduced the size of the foot by a little bit. Here's where I decided to be better safe than sorry and I put a little bit of CA glue in the bark inclusion and in that one big crack that goes across kind of the middle part of the bowl. It didn't end up being a problem but um, I decided just to do for insurance.
You can briefly see that big bark inclusion that goes all the way across the top of the bowl. And uh, since it's not present at the bottom, I'm hopeful that I'll be able to turn most of it away and I won't have any problems. I was a little worried to see an additional bark inclusion here in the middle that I wasn't aware was going to be there. But since it wasn't visible in the bottom, I felt pretty confident that it would all turn away and I wouldn't run into any structural issues. Right here is where I'm noticing a crack that kind of takes a C shape in the side of the bowl where that bark inclusion was. I think it was a dead branch that got healed over and just included inside the tree at some point. And uh, here I think I'm deciding to fill it with a little CA just for some insurance. It doesn't, doesn't go all the way to the edge, but the crack has kind of got me a little bit worried.
You can really hear the bowl kind of squealing as I'm doing this final scraping. Got it down to about a quarter of an inch all the way down and it's super dry so it, it definitely has a really high pitched resonance. This camera angle looks a little weird with the light in the way, but I was trying to get as much light along the rim of the bowl as I could because that would provide me with some uh, shadows where tool marks were and make sure that I got everything as smooth as possible before I go on to the next grit. I was going through my comments today on one of my earlier videos and I had a, a viewer mention that they thought this nub removal technique was dangerous. And, you know, that's a matter of opinion. Everybody has their own threshold, but it made me think and I actually did some physics and math to examine exactly how, how dangerous would this be for a bowl this size. Um, with the lathe speed here and all that. So if you're interested in seeing the particulars of that, let me know in the comments below if you would like to see me do a short video on the details of that. I did find one YouTube video in my search that talked about some of the physics of wood turning, but that person was obviously not a physicist and was using really confusing terminology in terms of uh, being accurate. So I think this might be a place where my background in teaching physics for 24 years might be beneficial. So if you're interested, again, put a comment below, let me know.